Adrift. Turns. I have so many things stirring around in my spirit that I have to write to settle myself and find God's wisdom in the midst of chaos. I'm scared I won't be strong enough to face the things we might have to face in the coming weeks and months. But then, I remember how much grace God gave us to walk out everything we've already faced. I've never felt completely overwhelmed, and I've never felt alone. So no matter what comes next, and I truly cannot even begin to guess how this will go, I know we will be carried. What? to shout out look what God is about to do watch how he delivers Joel <clears throat> and at the same time I'm going to roll up in a silent ball and wait it out with fear and trembling so aware of all my doubt but yet convinced that my doubt is insignificant compared to God's Is that alcohol and baby flasks? Oh. Mm. Dear Eli, oh. I feel nothing but pride for the way you battled cancer. I remember the way you learned to ride your tricycle down the hospital hallway and set it down the sidewalk like other three-year-olds. It was hard for me to pray to God, thy will be done, when I really just wanted so desperately for him to heal you. In the four and a half years that you dealt with harsh treatments, only once did you ask why God let you get cancer. I hope he has been able to explain the why to you, as I have always believed that he knew how strong you were and wanted to use you and your situation to positively impact so many lives. I remember how you never let me go to bed without telling me that you loved me and how those were your very last words to me. You taught me what was truly important in life, son. Still now, years after you left Earth, people are impacted by your life and the lessons you taught us. Thousands of people from around the world read your blog and still feel such a strong connection to you, even though they never met you in person. <sighs> oh my god. That is heavy stuff. And so I think... Oh, of... Yeah, of course. Now I get it. These are letters in bottles. So in the sea of... Hmm. Of cancer... That's... We've been through so much already. This the rain inside you tragedy, created not so much different from the struggle we've already been living. We pressed there into are these God. messages from we all into faith. We fought until all we the found people left peace. behind we it lost somebody. To to more. We stood in peace when it started to feel like laziness or foolishness or both. <laughs> we waited for God to direct us specifically in prayer because all the directions we had initiated had not panned out. We prayed for no nausea, because that's what we felt in our spirits we were supposed to pray, even though we'd prayed it countless times before while Joel continued to vomit. We saw one small miracle, and then another, 
We waited to pray specific things until we were given specific direction and we saw bigger miracles. And yet, if you asked either of us if we were doing enough, trying hard enough, we would say no. What are you supposed to do? I had been in this room with my father before, during the brief window where he wasn't dying but was instead getting better. That wasn't the man I saw this time. I saw the other one, the one who cried out and needed holding, the one who fell asleep for 20 seconds and then woke up a different person each time. There was a clear part right in the middle of it, a minute or so, where everything was calm before his tour of hell resumed. That was goodbye, even if no one said it. I don't think I will ever get better after having seen that. I think this is the kind of knowing that stays with you. I can reach into my pocket now and find it there. So, it's kind of incredible the level of detail they put in this game. These are all messages you can read. And it kind of has to be messages from real cases. The ravenous reverie of waking is but a distant memory. Or was it a dream? I can't remember the last time I woke up hungry. Not so long ago, carefree, welcoming the challenge of yoga on paddle boards, springing through the rain and over puddles at the reservoir track. Weathering several storms since entering the first battlefield over two years ago, a succession of precise scalpels high energy beams and pharmacological strategies, a journey no one asks for. Still standing, spirit unyielding, but not the same. With each treatment an imprint, evidence of what came before, willing rogue mutinous cells to yield to my current tailored chemical onslaught, stay put and do not multiply, or better yet, disappear altogether. By the will of God, through the tools of modern medicine, with the support of family and friends. Onward. One more here. I am at Seattle Children's Hospital, and nobody wants to be here. Even as an internationally recognized temple of healing, every inch of it is terror. Every cubic inch of every room that is not occupied by terrified children and terrified parents is filled to its capacity with a terror wholly unique to that family, which no other person has any power to comprehend. There is art on the walls and rooms which is designed to evoke a jungle of some kind, and I resent it. Every giraffe is my sworn enemy. What do you hold against giraffes? the same again okay Stop. I am at nah, Seattle nah, nah. Children's Hospital and nobody wants to stop it it's okay all right then go on no where to next Is you get hungry at night? <laughs> He's a smart boy. Yeah. Okay, so I can really do anything here. 
at listening. A big version of my little chipmunk. <laughs> Do you guys remember when he couldn't even eat any solids? And he couldn't, because he couldn't swallow. Do you remember that from the surgery? How it hurt his ability to swallow, so we had to give him bottles? Yeah, I remember one time we had pizza. So he chewed it all up and then spat out everywhere. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> what? I remember. So gross, but he just wanted to try things so bad. He wanted to taste them. He wanted to be like you guys. <coughs> he got to taste foods. He loved to eat, and I remember all I wanted was to him for him to be able to kind of eat like a normal kid and have normal things. I thought he'd never be able to swallow normal food, but then he did. <laughs> and now he eats everything. Everything. Like he eats pizza and pretzels and chicken and fingers. He tried to These guys, the families. <laughs> Doing a great okay. job. In, down. Come here. Come here. Come here. <sighs> however great it can be to deal with that topic, okay. cancer, uh, with their own think? children, with uh, uh, okay. Joel's okay. siblings, addressing them to them. Lay down. Okay, well, let's see. We can proceed to over here. Yes, okay. So, how long will we be in California? Um, I don't actually know. That's kind of why we're packing up everything, is because if the trial works really well, then oh. maybe we'll stay in California for a really long time. Laser swords. As long as it keeps helping Joel, then we want to stay and do the best we can for him and stay there where he's getting help. But if the medicine starts to not work, as soon as it's not helping him, I promise we'll come back home. Uh, are we going to Disneyland? <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, let's listen to one here. I remember the day I was diagnosed. I remember the hallucinations from the high fever of five-year-old's nightmares. I remember my mother silently weeping in the doctor's office. I remember friends and family gathered around my hospital bed in prayer. I remember the two-hour ambulance ride to St. Jude where they could better care for me. I remember the two and a half years of weekly chemo treatments the numerous lumbar punctures and bone marrow aspirates. I remember doctors Bell, Dahl, and Kalinsky, nurses Jean, Judy, and Dale, Miss Chris in social work, Darlene in travel, all part of the team that cared for me. I am a walking memorial to their successes. I remember the other patients I'd see each time I went to the hospital for chemo. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant. I remember the years of summer camp for children with cancer, children like me. I remember their laughter and the midnight talks of fears and joys, normal kid stuff, some less so. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant, but I remember them. I am and other survivors are memorials to those who lost their fights. As this long day draws to a close, I am tired, but not sleepy. My face is puffy from crying. I have a dry throat and dry hands, a slight headache, and a desire to write down absolutely everything. I want to describe the feeling of being entirely empty and entirely resolute. I want to explore how I can be deeply sad and incredibly hopeful at the same time. I want to talk about holding Joel's hand. Walking down the hall, wanting to soak in the moment. To memorize the feeling of having his hand and mine. To let it matter. 
and then hating that my thoughts swing to, because what if I can't hold his hand one day? And hating that thought, wishing I could just appreciate each second of Joel without that appreciation spilling into the pre-morning I refuse to do because I believe he will live. But instead of fighting the brief thoughts of mourning, choosing to fight instead that lie that says that those thoughts betray some doubt, some mistrust of God when I know that those thoughts make me human that God knows I am human. He doesn't make Joel's victory dependent on me never feeling unsure. Oh. You assholes. Oh, her expectation is so maddening sometimes. Do you know what she wrote on the eve of Joel's first surgery? The one back in January when we first found the tumor? I seriously feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. <clears throat> and yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord, replete with presents and supernatural miracles. Baby night. Hop in bed, boys. Let's go. Boys, get in bed. Oh, can you at least tell us a story? Hmm. All right. Um, <sighs> sure. What okay. do we have here? This is the story of a very brave knight named Joel. Whoop, whoop. Joel the baby knight? Yes, yeah. Joel the baby knight. All right, but he's also Joel the very brave knight. And he was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. Oh God! Well, fuck no. Uh, okay, that's the attack button. Because of his tumor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where does the dragon live? Great game. Um, Love it. In a forest. Oh. Uh, is the dragon big? Very Can I? <gasps> there it is. Does the Setting. dragon breathe fire? So much. Fire. What? Am I supposed to duck? Where am I supposed to duck? Behind here? Okay. Duck. Why did it hit me the first so, time? So, Joel has armor, like nice. a sword and a shield and stuff. Maybe, Ooh, or maybe. maybe a spear. Infinite spears, bitch. Yeah, oh, that God. sounds good. So, so, brave Sir Joel with his sword and his shield and his awesome spear. And double jump, and maybe? Nope. His super jumping ability. Ah, is there being we go. chased by a dragon named Cancer. What other superpowers does he have? Uh, he also has. I got jumps, maybe. That's not a superpower. <laughs> it's the best superpower. Do you guys know what grace means? Yeah, it's kind of like help. Yeah, it's kind of like help. Hmm. Well, that is good. You, know, you need that in the life. The only one who's ever tried to fight this dragon. Some very brave knights have fought this dragon and lost. And some are able to drive the dragon off. And then they can go home and they can quit fighting for a while. And the kingdom is safe. Joel's been fighting this dragon for a long time, huh? A long time. But Joel found a nice empty cave where he could rest. Come on. Row. Damn it. Now, ah, okay. Empty cave. Again, I'm pretty amazed. 
That is a very awesome idea. First of all, the parents telling this story of that cancer, uh, that cancer, the dragon named cancer to their children and by the developers to and it seems turn like it into this find him. pretty awesome but just when he thought that the danger was past the dragon found his hiding spot and came after him in the uh -oh. cave well, that dragon's going to kill you don't go to move why do you say that because Joel is just a baby. Babies can't kill dragons. Yeah, but Joel is a brave knight. You're right. Uh, okay, I'm... Baby can't kill the dragon. But that's the best part of this. Shoot! Ah. God fights for Joel. What the? He fights dragon cancer right with Joel. And we know that God can win even if Joel can't. That's grace. That is... That is OP bullshit right there. Come on, take this. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Whoa, not damn it. Okay. Well, what about Tim from Trench Mom? He died from cancer. Wasn't God fighting for him? Timmy. Didn't he have him? Of course, God fought for Tim too. Tim fought so Fuck well. It. Well, so cancer ready. is fucking oh, strong. God let him rest. It may have seemed like the dragon won because oh. Tim died. We know that Tim's in heaven and that he's with God. Oh, Tim God died. Okay. So proud of him. So maybe for Tim getting to be done fighting wolves. Guess there is nothing to do for him. Again, this year, turning this into a boss fight, you kind of can't win. Really strong pictures. Okay, so... Back up there. So she is in the boat. You have to, you'll drown. We're already drowning. She's in the boat and the boat there like that. symbolizes the hope. Help anything. And he is drowning. In no, despair. This is false hope. And I'm not despairing. How can you say false hope? You're drowning! Well you're missing your oars! And you don't even know where you're going. And yet you're so sure you're going to get there. It's better than drowning. Well, enjoy floating on the surface like you always do. There's nothing deep about drowning. Just get in the boat. You have to let me feel this. Someone has to. That's not fair. <clears throat> I love him as much as you do. I just really believe we're going to be okay. Expectation looks like denial, but seeing Joel dying does not make me any less certain that he will be here. In some ways, I feel more certain, not because the same doubts don't come to me, but because I know that they will not be entertained much longer, because this chapter is almost finished, and we will have an ending one way or the other. So the doubts and fears that make me reaffirm that even if I'm wrong, this is where I stand, become less and less powerful. 